What's going on guys? It's Gendo here. Hope you're having a good day and welcome back to another edition of the Great Chicago Fire. And before I get any further, I'd like to thank you all very much for the continued support on this series. You guys are absolutely smashing it. I would like to ask you to leave a comment in the video below on what has been your favorite part of the series so far. And of course, if you also still have any questions on this series. I know that I tried to be an informative MLS save for the people that do not know a lot of the rules. Is there anything else that you want me to go over or re-go over later on in the series? Please let me know and I'll address it in future episodes. But for now, we gotta get ourselves down to business and get out of this Champions League group stage. Our final two group matches will be played today, which I feel very strongly we're gonna get wins. So I'm gonna try and play as many of the youngsters as possible, get a little bit of a rotation going. But of course, before we get to that, we need to go over how we've been faring in the league thus far. And as you can clearly see, four green dots mean four wins and against three teams that are sitting and fighting for a playoff spot in the Eastern Conference. Toronto, Orlando City, DC United all coming away with very solid wins there and then a 3-0 victory against Columbus who are sitting dead last in the Eastern Conference. And the main story of these four matches is that Michael Delu scored in every single one of them. He has picked up seven goals in these last four games including a hat trick versus DC United in stoppage time. That hat trick goal coming in stoppage time to pull ourselves with the all three points winning 3-2. But as you can see Michael Delu has been on fire this year pun very much intended as he is now the new all-time leading goal scorer in a season for the Chicago Fire 19 goals in 25 league appearances hell he probably could have done it last season Dimitar Berbatov could have done it last season as well but Michael Delu leading goal scorer in a single season for the Chicago Fire and at three years old he shows no signs of stopping he's contracted until the end of next season so I want to try and get a new contract his way as soon as possible to keep him at this club. But the Dutch line today is not going to be suiting up. We have Dimitar Berbatov going to be sitting at the top. We have Solignac on the bench, as well as youngster Ruben Diaz, so he can finally get himself some actual play time against these guys. But the rest of the lineup is as follows. We have Lampson and Nett, Ramos, Gehrig, Opara, and Chris Hall along the back line. Matt Polster is our DM. Ferreira and Kokish, the two midfielders. And on the wings, of course, Akam and Molino. I could stick Alvarez up in there, but... I might as well go with what I know and get the win secured early before subbing these guys on. I just had my assistant manager tell me that uh, we should go for this, guys. We should go for it. As if we don't go for it every single time out. As if we don't go on the offensive every single game we play. Kokish, you can just find the wing. I'm pointing it out to you, Molino. Go out to the wing. All right, or take a shot and have it bounce off the crossbar. Respect the equipment and then you'll get the goal. Still moving forward in this first half, still with all of the ball. Chris Hall into David Akam. Just need to turn and shoot, but has to play back out to Ramos. Still in attacking position. Molino, I mean, where's the foul ref? That should have been a foul. Chris Hall now with a cross in to Molino. Actually bounced off of Akam into Molino, who then smacks into the back of the net. He finally gets his goal on the day after taking three shots. Chris Hall with a very nice corner kick into David Akam with the wherewithal to head it back across the net instead of taking the shot. Molino right there gets his glory. I feel like I should be putting these highlights on fast forward because we're going to be scoring a lot of goals. And Molino, in two minutes, has scored his second on the day. 2-0 to the fire. And he's only one goal shy, double digits on the season. And this is what 70% possession will do you for. You keep it in their half. You don't allow the opponents to get any sort of touch on the ball or any sort of shot on your own net. And you're going to come away easy winners. It's been all the wingers that have done the work today. As you saw, a common Molino getting the assistant goals between them. So it just leaves me to wonder, what exactly is Berbatov doing in the top of the park. Now, but seriously, I'm paying this guy $2.1 million this year, and he has been largely quiet. Well, when you compare to Michael Delu, yeah, of course he's going to be quiet. Who did that bounce off of? Chris Hall. It bounces off of Chris Hall. The youngster is going to get credit for the goal, but Pedro Ferrero is the one who put it into the box. It does, in fact, take a touch off of Chris Hall, which did look a little intentional. So, all right, Chris Hall with the goal. Berbatov, I don't know what you're doing. Berbatov is not doing well this game against a team that we should really be putting our foot down on them. I mean, we are. Berbatov is looking the worst out there. I'm going to keep him out for at least another 10 minutes. And if he doesn't change it around, if he doesn't get a couple of shots on goal, well, then he's being subbed out. This is the first time, really, that they've had a real serious chance. They did have a shot uh, a shot taken earlier. I was about to say a shot on goal, but not really a shot on goal. They can still get a shot on goal here, and they do. Defense. 
what is the problem? Now, to be fair, this is exactly the same thing that happened to us in the first leg. We got ourselves up to a nice solid 3-0 lead. And then all of a sudden, within the last 20 minutes, Motagua came in, scored a goal, and looked very deadly for the last 20. Well, it looks like after that little spat that we gave up to Motagua and the little five-minute flurry that they had, it looks like we're going to come away with a nice 3-1 victory here. Kokish gets into the box. It's saved by the goalkeeper. And just like that, that's three wins out of three. And we are officially winning this group. We are officially moving on into the next round, the quarterfinals of the CONCACAF Champions League. Now, don't get me wrong, that's a great accomplishment, but we're not going to be actually playing that until the start of next season. The CONCACAF Champions League knockout stages happen between February and the end of April. So that means players that I'm playing right now this season might not even make it all the way once the quarterfinals happen. In fact, that is going to be the case for some of these players, that they're doing well here, but they're not going to be making it over into next season. So this guy was offered to me halfway through the season. I decided to scout him because I know of Valbuena. I just never knew his ability. And to say that he is available to be brought into the MLS, I think I might take a chance on him in the offseason. But that's all speculation at this point. Oh man, I would be in so much debt if I brought him in. I'd be in so much debt if I brought him in Schweinsteiger at the same time. Oh god, don't give me thoughts. Don't give me thoughts. I might be that stupid if might actually do it. Right, so we got ourselves our final Champions League group match coming up now. Quintana away from home. And yes, you see that correctly. We got the 19-year-old youngster in between the sticks today. Jesus Ernesto Quintero Morones. But of course, that means if he's going to be there, I need to have my full back line just to protect him, just in case something wrong happens. So Ramos, Mara, Kapelhoff, and Vincent will be sitting in front of him. Matt Polster's going to be the defensive mid on the day. Kokish and Hogger ahead of them. A common Alvarez on the wings and Luis Soignac sitting up front as the lone striker today. Yes, we're going to have Delu on the bench. We're going to have Ruben Diaz on the bench. Berbatov is going to be sitting in the stands this time around. It's all about that squad rotation. In the end, this match doesn't mean anything, but of course, got to keep fitness up. And I might as well give some of the players that I don't often play some play time. Because at the end of the day, you got to make everyone happy. And of course, in a very winnable match such as this, I can afford to play some of these players. I can afford to play Jesus. Four minutes on now. Ball coming forward. Solignac into Alvarez. Like I just said, I can afford to play this man. It's his fifth goal of the season. It's 1-0 to Chicago. And you might as well just wrap this up right now because to be quite honest with you, there's just no way that Quintana is coming back from this. And I don't know why I decided to do a stereotypical Chicago accent once I started talking. Just two minutes later now, the ball is coming inside. Solignac gets it way out to a calm. I thought Vincent was going to get it, but Solignac lasers it into the back of the net and just like that rapid double fire i mean if it's going to be like this early i might as well get the youngsters up and out very early i might as well make all three subs at the half into solignac it's just that simple three straight highlights three straight goals and just like that we haven't even hit 10 minutes and already i'm thinking we could possibly get double digits in this match vincent another good cross and it's academic at this point a decent cross into Solignac, who one touches it past the goalkeeper in for an easy goal. Half an hour gone now, Ramos getting the through. Solignac gets himself his hat trick. I mean, I was just about to go on this long-winded thing if Ramos kept coming down the wing, but he didn't give me time. Pin perfect accuracy on that cross to Solignac for his hat trick. Let's take a look at this again. I don't understand... I don't understand how easy this is, but at the same time, it's Quintana. They're from Puerto Rico. They're not a good team. They're not on our level. Oh, you thought I was joking. No, I'm making all three subs. As you can clearly see, Vincent Hogger and Akam are all coming out. Chris Hall, Drew Connor, Kevin Molino all taking their places. David Akam, mostly because his morale has gone down the tubes, and I don't understand why. But otherwise, Vincent Hogger are coming out due to fitness and uh, rating. So that's what I'm going to be doing. All three at the half. And I really hope this doesn't bite me in the ass. Huh? Corner kick. Kokish gets it inside. Who hit that? Was that Solignac or is that an own goal? Solignac has got half his goals this season in this one match alone. Fourth goal on the day. Eighth goal on the season. Kokish, he actually bounces it off of a player. It actually bounced off of Gutierrez, which then bounced off of Solignac into the back of the nets. Fluky goal, but it's a goal nonetheless. 58 minutes on now. Rodrigo Ramos, he can definitely cross it in from deep. It instead gets it to Alvarez, and that's going to be an own goal. This time around, it's an own goal. And it's 6-0 to the fire. 
and the hits keep coming and they don't stop coming as the song says because really Quintana have just shot themselves in the foot twice in a row this time around. I just don't know what to say at this point in time. It's a repeat of last match and very well could be a continuation with this highlight right here. It's a clearance out, but we all know that Rodrigo Ramos can put in a decent cross. Drew Connor, though, however, gets the cross in and the sub Molino comes on and gets himself his third goal in two games. It's 7-0 to the fire. We're still on pace for those 10 goals. Well, it looks like double digits is well out of the realm of possibility now. One minute of stoppage time on the clock and we're just about to run down on that. And in fact, uh, Jesus really had little to do in between the sticks today. He had three shots taken on him, one of them being on target. He only had to make one save. But other than that, the rest of the guys up front did their job, and we come away with a nice solid 7-0 victory to seal an undefeated group stage. Now that being said, most of the teams in the Champions League group stage have played all of their matches. I think there's still one more round to go to pick up any of the stragglers that have still yet to play a match. But let's take a look at how the groups are shaping up and to see who has automatically advanced. So it goes like this, from top to bottom, in Group A, Sporting KC do have a match to play, but they have already advanced. DC United already advancing out of theirs, also going undefeated in their group. Of course, us sitting down here in Group C going undefeated. Santos Laguna could possibly not advance, but Walter Ferretti, as you can see down here, needs a 12-goal swing in their final match to jump Santos, so I'm pretty sure we're going to talk that up to Santos Laguna advancing. We have Monterey and Olympia, but it looks like Monterey have already got themselves through the an, another team out of Mexico. Seattle and Humble Lions. Where are Humble Lions out of? Jamaica. I should have known they're a Jamaican team, but Seattle and Humble Lions need to play a match to see which one of those two go throughs. All Seattle need to do is draw is because they are the team that is currently in the lead. Down here in Group G, Comunicaciones and Pachuca. Well, th there's not a lot of matches. Actually, there's a lot of matches that need to be played down here. And same within Group H. But right now, Comunicaciones are leading their group, but Pachuca from Mexico have a match in hand on them. And same down here in Group H, Club America out of Mexico have a match in hand on Toronto, who also have the same amount of points. So that one could come down to the wire. We could possibly see five of our MLS teams moving on into the quarterfinals. That would be the best possible scenario, but you can never count out any of the Mexican teams. Even if they have three in the knockout rounds, they are still deadly forces in CONCACAF Champions League because to be quite honest with you, they pretty much rule the roost in the CONCACAF Champions League. There have been only two teams in the MLS that have won the Champions League here. DC United back in 1998 and Los Angeles Galaxy in 2000. There has not been a U.S. or just an MLS team in general that has won the CCL since 2000. Montreal Impact made it two years ago, losing out to Club America, but we honestly don't know when another MLS team is even going to make it to a final. Mexico seems to dominate this competition, and I'm going to hope to try and break that domination. First year, though, it could be a bit of a problem, but we shall wait and see. Uh, the group draw, or I should say the knockout draw for this Champions League doesn't happen until late November of this season or early December, so we won't know who we're going to be facing until season's end, and we'll cover that up in the season roundup, so no worries about that. But as you can see, there are still five matches left to go in this MLS season. Of course, I want to come back and live con the last two, Orlando City and New York Red Bulls. End of the season could very well be us and Red Bulls fighting it out for a top spot if I go on a very bad run against these next three teams, next four teams. Uh, well, if Orlando City would be in the next episode. But Sporting KC, Columbus, and LA Galaxy, if we come up bad against them and lose three straight, New York Red Bulls are right back in it. But uh, we'll find out at that next time in the next episode. So until that time, guys, I'd like to thank you very much for watching this episode. And if you liked it, please go and hit that like button. Let's me know that you're still interested in the series. And of course, if you're new to the series and the channel in general, please go and hit that subscribe. Any comments, suggestions, questions, and as I said before, anything you want to know more about the MLS, please leave me in the comment box below. But as always, guys, this is Gendo, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and peace out.